All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to what is now game number four here. Again, a two to one series lead in favor of BMG in this best of five for the Deadeye Bounty League. As you can see, once again, pretty well developed here into the draft. Joined by Shortcut as my co caster. And looking to see if BMG is going to wrap it up here with three wins in a row, or will Mint force a fifth and final game? That is what is on the line at this point. So, once again, you know, pretty pretty similar stuff. Uh, the Cthulhu font a little bit new here, but you can say pro probably in response to the Parasite pickup uh, coming out from Mint. So maybe a little bit early there from uh, from Fresh, but what's done is done now. Yeah, it's gonna definitely prevent the split pushing from Parasite in a uh, in a, you know Ballista, siege the Lista yeah. or a Hell Cannon. Yeah, it, but that's the main use for it because once you like, if Parasite decides to go aggressive jungle, even though Cthulhu Fund might be there, it's still heavily reliant on Cthulhu Fund not using his shield and still he finds Parasite. And Parasite can just go into a creep and just you know eat the creep for the golden farm, and then that. Case Cthulhu Fund's not going to get any farm, but like Breaky, why are they picking Puppet Master first pick every single game? <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it seems like it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, for uh, BMG at least. <laughs> well, they they going to go here once again. So yeah, we'll see how it works out this time around. But the Magnus also third pick there from Mint, able to get their hands on that again. Their worst hero, I'm sure, will be pointed out once again. So. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of <laughs> funny, you know. Though it, it is interesting, though, you know how the four games in a row now, all four games. That's the one hero that has been very similar for them is that Magnus. For, uh, exactly. For Mint, yeah, so. it's it's interesting. I mean, they don't see the stats that Quincy is constantly popping up with the whole Toast command and stuff. But yeah. I mean, they really value that hero, and I've seen other teams value Magnus as well. Everybody likes to first pick Magnus, but it used to be maybe for the dual mid option, but. It's now transitioning more into that support role or the suicide. And I personally think that it's best on the suicide, so you focus a bit more farm on him. Because Magnus with a lot of farm is really difficult to take down. He's very slippery, so to speak. Yeah. Same thing as kind of a bubbles with the disjoint on the steam bath and, you know, disjoint on the lava surge and, you know, a PK and maybe even a storm spirit. Very similar to bubbles, in my opinion. Yeah, we that was his role for quite a bit of time, but it's definitely died off as the go-to role for Magnus. He's definitely played as more as the middle initiator, of course, even as a secondary support, yeah, pulling into the, the jungle there, as we've seen in likes of BMG and whatnot. So um just doesn't seem like that uh, suicide Magnus is really as prevalent anymore. But Well, I meant more the mid, mid like mid Magnus, where you would go dual mid with, for example, oh, Pyromancer. Okay, that makes a lot more that sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, on suicide, you still see Magnus because he's so able to. He's very able to roam, really yeah. easily. Especially if you get the early boots on Magnus, it's it's a really good roaming hero. But um, in mid, if you focus a lot of farm on Magnus, I mean, you want the PK, but does he really do the same as, for example, a Deadwood with PK? Like he doesn't have the same amount of burst, and you really want the main ganker to be middle. Like, you saw last game, you had Bombardier and Chipper versus each other. Mm -hmm. Chipper is really good at ganking, but Magnus, you know, he, he he's really good at defending towers, of course, but he can do that when he's suicide, and he can have his PK a bit later. He's more of a counter-initiator rather than a ganker, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Yeah, Pebbles, obviously, another big one, and actually, with that Nymphora pickup, who knows? Who knows what can happen here? Yeah. Um, I mean, who's going to play the Pebbles? Maybe Boxy. We did see him play it in uh, the World Finals. Yeah. But uh, what I've noticed as well is that Magnus is very weak versus certain dual mids. Like with uh, Prisoner being picked up more, like Prisoner completely counters Magnus along with Pebbles because Pebbles is just really, really tanky to magic damage. Not so much to physical damage, but you can have uh, Pebbles tanking out all the damage and then coming out with bursts of his own and Magnus just can't survive that anymore. Now, so far for Mint, they've ran really kind of a dual carry strat all three games here. And I wonder, so is that going to be the same now? Or are they actually going to change it up this time around? They do go to Swift Blade, of course, in one of the carries. But we'll see what that final pick ends up being here from Mint to give us that information. 
Again, could easily be a suicide swift blade here, but that means once again you'd probably end up with a support Magmus if that's the case. So. I think they're going to go for the support Magmus because they have Kreke on uh, Flux again. Yeah. Which could true. be argued is his best hero. I mean, Quincy put up the stats before that Kreke has like a ridiculous win percentage with Flux. Yeah, no, no doubt he's really, really good in that hero. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. This is one of the heroes that, now I will say Reason Gaming, they did actually defeat Sync Esports with it, so th there is something to it there, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's out here. this hero, yeah. man, the win percentage, not the best, and I don't know, how do, how do you feel about Drunken Master as a hero? I mean, you can't run him as a carry. You can't really run him as a mid. The only position he has is when you're suicide, but then again, he can't do that well suicide either, because if he's against any decent support, if he's against any decent support, then Drunken Master is just going to be shut down. And that's really not what you want. Like, if it's a 1v1 Drunken Master and he snowballs out of control, mm -hmm. that can be ridiculous. And we are going to be seeing probably a Suicide Magnus. And I did kind of prefer this because, I mean, he, he's going to get more levels this time around than as a support yeah and that's definitely the important thing yeah uh, that that final pick Cersei though now I'll say Serenia has actually played a, a little bit of Cersei and then definitely there's again I forget the exact matchup but there was one performance recently that really stood out as he did fantastic on the hero so Cersei I've always been a huge fan of uh, personally as when it comes to the support option I mean the illusions that that she has as far as being able to be an annoyance basically throughout the whole game that can constantly keep the other team in check in terms of is it an illusion is it an actual hero um her landing phase that uh, that's it's safe to say that's where it's the weakest but into the mid and especially the late game she really can't shine you know of course her ultimate being the twisted visage is what really can can do a lot of work here so it looks like <laughs> gonna have a lot of restarts here unfortunately again having some issue with unable to move but uh what what do you what, what do you think about the cersei pickup um, I really like Cersei when it's uh, with a ranged carry. For a fact, you know that Moon Queen with Cersei is a deadly combo. Like, bases. Like, you can siege a base so easily when you have four illusions up of Moon Queen all the time. And then, on top of that, you can have a Geometer's Bane with it. I don't like it with melee carries for that exact reason. Like, it feels a lot weaker. Because ranged carry illusions just seem a lot stronger than that of a melee you know, of a melee carry, and especially Swiftblade, who, I don't know, like, he doesn't scream hard carry to me. Hard, he he's really there for the mid-game, to win the mid-game. Yeah. And I think that a lot of that has to do with how he's played as well in the scene, honestly, and more as a suicide, more as a secondary carry a lot of the time. And we see him in that, in that true carry role as well, but, yeah, you're right, it, it doesn't seem like that he maybe necessarily is that hard carry like a Dark Lady or whatnot, so... Um, yeah, the, the, that's where maybe the Cersei team may, may not necessarily be the most powerful. But I mean, again, e even if you're not not getting like that Moon Queen illusion to be able to spawn off of to farm or whatnot, it still seems like just the illusions alone and how it just keeps the other team guessing, I think, is just very powerful in itself. So, for yeah. scouting purposes, it's really strong. Yeah. Um, I was talking to some people in the Solar Club, and because uh, I'm in contact with them quite a lot, just team M in general. And um, I remember Cannon Dwarf telling me that he was getting he absolutely super duper annoyed by Cersei being played by Insania. Mm -hmm. Insania decided that it'd be a good idea to use his illusions to block almost every single camp at every single minute so that he can get farm. <laughs> he yeah. got... Like, if you play Cersei to that amount of, you know... Uh, interference, I would like to say, mm -hmm. then then the hero is incredibly strong. But as you said, the laning phase is really where that hero is the weakest. Yeah. But um, we'll do we'll we'll see because um, that hero essentially means they can get another core in mm -hmm. team fights. Yeah, it is it is a little funky picking it up into a Drunken Master. Not that, it's, again, that's the end of the world, but again, with that Untouchable, obviously you won't be able to look to maybe take control of him. But 
especially early on in the game is at the level one and two of the ultimate even, you're more likely trying to get that initiated, or something like the Behemoth or the Cthulhu Fun even, because the damage output, it's only 70, 85, and then eventually 100% damage at level three, and that's where you want to maybe take up the Puppet Master, of course. Yeah, definitely. I don't think Cthulhu Fun is really the option to take, because you really want that big cooldown, and Obliterate just doesn't scream Shockwave to me. That's true, yeah. Yeah, the um, will probably be priority, yeah. Exactly. Like, Puppet Master could also be really good in the early skirmishes or ganks because of the amount of lockdown that he can provide, and that ultimate is also, like Shockwave, a really big cooldown. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, don't call me certain can. <laughs> and, um, yes, Magnus is Mint's worst hero. Thank you, Quincy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we have confirmed it. We are good to go. Zibby, uh, is Zibby going to be playing it this time around, though? And he hasn't played it, obviously, yet this series. So despite this now being their fourth game in a row with it, he's uh, going to give it his go. And at the bottom, look at that. Minor totem and a ward of sight is all he has currently. Ward of sight was given to him. So he's kind of, I guess, feeling it out, seeing what he's going up against first before he does buy. He is going to be going up against a drunken Nymphora. Uh, not a drunken Nymphora, but a drunken master in a Nymphora. That's what we got here, so that's yeah, I can't say I honestly expected that. I mean they sent Puppet Master middle and then it is gonna be a suicide behemoth yet again. They did this the second game, I wanna say it was. That's what Yeah. I mean, again we have the whole Puppet Master versus Flux. I that's definitely definitely favorable for the Puppet Master. And we're seeing it more and more that Puppet Master is just ran as a semi carry. And this game again. I mean, Boxy is going to be playing the short lane carry, which I don't like as a drunken master. They could have gone for something a bit... Like, I would say Pebbles would have fit here really, really well, especially with the Nymphora pick. You were mentioning it, mentioning it during the picking phase as well, that they could potentially pick up Pebbles due to that Nymphora pick. Drunken master just can't do as much burst as Nymphora. I mean, as Nymphora Pebbles, if they do decide to gank when Nymph is level 6. Yeah, Behemoth, he goes down at the top lane. The Fidger Stun, not enough. Cersei and Swift Blade come together. I actually missed the beginning, but I'm guessing the Entrapment hit <laughs> from Cersei. And uh, able to get the... So, yeah, I know, I know a lot of people... Could, and I brought it up, too, that her laning phase isn't necessarily the strongest, but Entrapment actually is a pretty good tool at the same time. Especially having a Swift Blade teammate, of course, but... I really wonder how he's going to skill this game, though, yeah. as the Cersei. Because uh, I've seen versus ranged suicides, you can actually get your illusion early on to be more of that harassing factor. It's only 33% of the damage, but a Bubbles can't you know, man up versus a Cersei with an illusion of himself hitting him. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I would definitely want him to spec one in his, his E if worst comes to worst. Because yeah. uh, you want to be able to get away. That's a 1.1 1 .1 ability, I think. It's yeah, yeah. at least get the one point of that. and It's a good getaway tool. Another one that can like, kind of throw them off guard, too. So Would not be surprised to see that. Magmus, by the way, it looks like he's going stats, actually. He's two into Lava Surge and nothing else, so unless he's sitting on a point. Yeah, I think Zibe. I don't know. I've seen him max stats before. And I mean, I also saw uh, Mickey do it one game, but Mickey was absolutely wrecking that game with Ghost Marchers. So <laughs> that was a, uh, yeah, interesting turn of events. Yeah. And although I would argue for the Puppet Master middle to win, Kraken is doing a really good job at last hitting right now. He's at 270, 280 GPM, and Puppet is only at 230. Yeah, he's definitely uh, winning that matchup so far, as far as the last hitting goes. See, the Puppet Master gets his bottle delivered right now, so we'll see if that maybe changes things a little bit. Going to allow him to freely play a little bit more aggressive, as well as, of course, use those abilities of his. But Ghost Marchers just finished already on Pro Busk, so it's safe to say Behemoth up here. I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to stand up here. I mean, now with those Ghost Marchers, if he gets any bit close, 
he could be in a lot of trouble. And then, of course, on top of that, all you got to eat. Paris that up here as well. So, yeah, the idea of the suicide behemoth, I was always intrigued by when we first started hearing about it going into the World Finals. And we saw it a little bit at least. And, you know, we are seeing a trickle hero every now and then. But um, it, it's good for keeping creep, like trying to get that lane position. We see again right here he's going to block off the creep wave and try to get it pulled back. But he's a very vulnerable hero. And... <laughs> We've already seen that once so far this game that he's died and, you know, could very likely die again, again, if he gets any bit close. So I, I really wonder, you know, how powerful a Suicide Behemoth truly is when that's the case. But I feel comfortable yeah, with I'm, it here. I mean, it's all – the reason you pick Behemoth is so that you – it's not about doing well in lane, mid lane. Yeah. Cthulhu Fun coming in with a haste. Playing jungle, actually. Mighty Marcus. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> something that, we hadn't noticed, but um, yeah, um, it, it is interesting though. Like, you pick that hero to not win your lane. So I think what Probusk and Serenia are doing is absolutely incredible right now. They're making sure to give him as little as possible, and they have a swift blade carry. So he's just gonna like pounce on any opportunity he can to just get a free kill on Behemoth. What what can he do? I mean Swift Blade has ghost marches. Here we go. Ulti and Yeah. <laughs> that, Speak of the expected, devil. Yeah. He steps a little bit up and there's the poke. Well played by Probusk though to um use his hatchet on the last creep to get his level six. He uh managed to look how much he needed and then skill his ultimate whilst running towards the behemoth when the creep wave was still not there. So it's the little things. Yeah, no, I'm glad you caught that because that, that's absolutely just little things that's hard to catch sometimes, but and pointed out, it's like, well, that makes you respect him that much more <laughs> as far as that play he yeah. just made. So middle lane, failed rot being set up right here from Magmas. They want to try to collapse on the Puppet Master. Now behemoth kind of nearby, or that's Cthulhuphon, excuse me, kind of nearby. They're waiting for level 6 Flux, maybe? Yeah, he just got level 6 right there. Puppet, Show. Puppet Master has no clue that he's going to be gone on here. There's the Lava Surge. Cersei joins the party. Even Parasite's here. And Kraken will ultimately get the kill. So four players collapse onto him and eventually take out Balthazar. So if he wasn't kind of struggling already, he is more than a, I've had it on the GPM chart now for a little bit, too. I mean, just look at Brobusk. 520 gold per minute. He not only has those two kills, including the Bloodlust, but he's also 48 and 9 creep farm. Drunken Master has 41 and 24. I mean, and he's been free farming too. Like, he's been doing really well. So, Probuska is just on fire up here at the top lane. And they're going to switch Drunken Middle actually now. And but but this is lane. where, yeah, this is where Probuska shines though, doesn't he? Yeah. Whenever he's given like a free farm lane and he gets the kills on the suicide, it's very likely that he's going to carry this game. Like, he's done it before with a Malakin, but on a Swift Blade. I don't think it's going to be much different. Like, they already look to have a good lead this game, and you see the aggression coming out from the Hellborn side. They are trying to shut down the Puppet Master as well with that gank from, you know, everybody but Swift Blade. Yeah. What I... I mean, at this point, would you think that Swift Blade should go something more greedy, though, rather than the Energizer that he did go? Well, uh, yeah, I was actually going to flux in the middle lane in the meantime. He actually goes down Cthulhu Fawn again. Mighty Marcus being active. He's 1-0-1 now, Drunken Master. Of course, get in the kill right there, but I was actually going to kind of bring that up too, how we have seen the portal key Swift Play kind of come back. Pee-wee of uh, Team Disband has done that now a couple of times, and it's that that's an interesting idea. But, and this kind of feels like a game where it actually might be a good idea to do it, but that goes back to what you're asking is, should he go a little more greedy perhaps um, as far as his farm is concerned? Should he go maybe the Abyssal Skull here, or should he go more into the Firebrand? Uh, Instead or of the Energizer, I, I like the Energizer, so I think you always start with that, honestly, especially with this farm. Well, what about a Rune Cleaver, for example? That's what uh, I was more... Okay, yeah, Emma Boy did that recently, too. Um, I, I think uh, a Rune Cleaver is a little too much. Yeah, that... At the same time, though, he's against a Drunken Master and a Puppet Master, so I, you're right, though, with the whole fact you should go for items that'll be helpful now rather yeah. than helpful later. So, But he is going quite a lot of build-up with Ring of the Teacher and Energizer, so I'm assuming he's getting an Abyssal and then going for the Firebrand and stuff mid lane. <laughs> yeah. Well, we see the combo potential here, of course, of, uh, of Mint. No chance for Drunken to react. So, But, yeah, I like the not only the Ring of the Teacher, but, again, eventually the Abyssal Skull because you do look at a Drunken Master here. He's all physical. He's all physical. and. He's honestly was having, he's still having an okay start here, 348 and sitting around that mark after that death, but um, 
this is clearly a game, though, again, for Mint, where they are being active once again. And so, We yeah. were missing that in game two and three. Yeah. To be perfectly frank, like, they picked Zibe a suicide, which he's doing really well with because he hasn't died, whereas, you know, Root of Z has died twice and has 93 GPM. Um, and he's also roamed twice to middle, and Behemoth is just not as good as Magmus in that. So if Mint wants to win this game, they have to prevent the Behemoth portal key for as long as possible, as well as keeping the Boxy from snowballing. And they're fulfilling those two objectives. I don't think they need to care that much about Balthazar's farm, because it's a Puppet Master. He's not going to do anything until he has a Shroud out middle. Oh yeah, they're going to jump on a Flux here. They say, you sent four to kill me, I'm going to get my buddies and send four to kill you. Flux goes down, and again, Boxy credit for the kill. So, But yeah, the, the Nymphoria, you're just not going the Pebbles, not going the Deadwood. Two, two heroes that come to mind, especially when you pick up an Nymphoria. Maybe a Dampier, if that, but... Uh, Drunken Master is definitely not one that you think like, oh, they went the damn or they went the damn four, and now let's follow that up with the Drunken Master. So uh, w we're gonna find out here, you know, what maybe the potential of that could be. But I, I don't know. I, now a portal key on Cthulhu Fawn actually is coming up here soon. Mighty Marcus has managed to do pretty well here in the jungle, so maybe that'll be something. Nymphora is level six, and having a portal key on Cthulhu Fawn could be the start of something here. Um, she didn't go grace with the Nymph either, and I think that's really worth stressing here. She actually went level 3 Volatile Pod with the level 2 Zeal Stun, so she's looking to be a little, a lot more aggressive. Uh, I do say. like it, personally. The Zeal Stun, you only need two levels in it for it to hit both on the way back and on the way there. So um, that's where that logic comes in, and the heal is just such a strong ability. Yeah. Okay, bottom. <laughs> Balthazar's dead as soon as I go there. <laughs> Parasite and Magmus doing work, but here goes Cthulhu Fawn. He actually gets a stun on the Magmus. Obliterate. No, he's Lava Surge away. And Infora's trying to get there in time. Maybe Strider's Behemoth. He just stuns him. Drunken Master, can he get a range of Stagger in two seconds? Not necessary. The lunge is enough. Luckily for them, there were no TPs coming in. But uh, now, Swift Blade pushing top, and in the mid lane, you have Flux and uh, Cersei putting pressure there. So they, they're using so many resources. Like the Nymph port, now, now they know, oh, Nymph port is not available, let's be as aggressive as possible, because Swift Blade, man, 500 GPM, like, um, I am watching his woods, though, there aren't a lot of stacks due to there being a Parasite there, but yeah. I think he's just going to go and steal the Ancients from the Legion team. <laughs> Only a single set of Ancients, though, so at least for their sake it's not stacked, if that's what he was going to do, but it doesn't even look like that, he wants, he wants blood, man, he wants to find somebody. But the Swift Slash is ready to go. It's still level one, but at this point, and might be Puppet Master, maybe, if he goes this direction. Oh, look at Pro Bust. The heads up, figuring that he might come here, and he's correct. And this oh, is going to easily be enough for a kill. Well, okay, there's a the spin. It's going to be enough in the end, but now the trample comes out. So it's in a lot of trouble here. Magmus is nearby. Nymphora maybe can get a range. The obliterate, not enough damage. He gets away. Magmus, a nice stun to prevent the death on him. However, now Magmus in trouble, but Flux is also here. Discharge up in 10 seconds. Parasite coming in with the Minotaur. Magmus line stun a couple of heroes. Drunken Master avoided it, though. Cut through the fuck, goes down, but so does Magmus. But Nymphora falls as well. In comes Drunken Master with the Untouchable. But you see Parasite's able to skate on out of there. Now Flux will try to push them away. Cersei doing as much as she can. She's still level five, so is not able to take somebody yet. Is actually going to spawn an illusion and try to maybe throw them off a little bit, but... In the end, it will force them back right there, and that'll be the end of it. So, Swift play living, though, no doubt the biggest deal there. We haven't really talked about it right now, but uh, Parasite is doing a huge, huge job. This like he, He's been in six of the eight kills happening oh, wow, this yeah. game for his team. Like When you have that kind of snowball factor, like in this game, this would be the one game where I'd say go for a codex. <laughs> so you can just keep finding the Puppet Master. Is he going to do it? Oh, he got Veldrot. Um, he, he can keep finding the Behemoth, keep finding the Puppet Master, you know. Be as active as possible and deal around 1,600 damage burst when you only have Lex Talionis 3 and, like, Codex 1. Yeah. Just last game, you were saying how you hate to see the Codex. Yeah, but <laughs> when you're – yeah, I know. <laughs> I know sometimes it's, it's situational, though, and that makes sense. Oh, middle lane. 
Flux is already picked off, and Drunken wants more. He just got a helmet of the Black Legion, by the way, so he's actually bulking up quite a bit. And again, one of these heroes that can afford to do that because of his skill set, how much damage he puts out. But Swift played in the background, he picks off him four at least. So a counter kill there, but the exchange in favor of the Legion team, and perhaps more down here at the bottom lane. Puppet Master goes down the shockwave from Behemoth. He was trying to finish off Parasite, but wasn't able to do so. And now we see Cthulhu Font. He's going to try to maybe get that Parasite still, but look at Parasite. He expected that. They have the vision of him coming over, and so it's not going to happen. He'll be fine as he hides there. But Puppet Master, again, another death. 0-4-1 for Balthazar. Not his day here. No, not his definitely game. not. But, uh, break it, it's also about the fact that Cthulhu Font is in the game. Yeah. Because, Very like, true, when... Yeah. I mean... I do consider Puzzle Box to actually kind of be a counter to Cthulhu as well. It, oh, mid lane. Cthulhu mid goes in. Speaking of him, tower goes down. Flux, look at Cersei, though. Taking over Cthulhu Fun. Is he going to be able to use it, really? Flux pulling. There's the Cersei Cthulhu Fun on the other one. And yes, we'll go down. So Cersei able to take over again and use that portal key right away, of course, and going to help push now. In the middle lane, that should be a tower kill, right? Yeah, there's no chance. Yeah. That. I mean, they're just going to opt to split push bottom instead with the Puppet Master and the Nymphora. They do have a Nymph TP, though, that they could potentially use. Oh, almost to deny. Where is Nymphora? She's at the bottom lane down here, kind of in the in the woods. Almost a little... Uh, okay, did she teleport in? Oh, she plays a ward aside up here. She does have teleport up, though. Yeah, she's going to need to use it. They figured something was up around there, but some good vision coming out from Fusen. They can take advantage of that uh, throughout the game. Behemoth trying to take some stacks here. Puppet Master, though, comes in and is like, I'm the carry, bro. I got to get some farm. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about your portal key? Uh, Zebe getting the PK. No, he opted to go Striders, which is uh, great for roaming. Yeah. And, I mean, he doesn't really need anything other than PK. It's nice. Everything else is just extra, you know? Especially with the buff to Striders, too, man. 150 gold. It feels so and freaking cheap now. Yeah, and you get health regen when you're roaming. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Striders. That's why, yeah, I mean, it's why people also pick it up on Legionnaire. Yeah. No, there's, I I would say it's underused, but, I mean, it's not. It's People know that it's a very powerful set of boots and on any roamer, any support especially. So, no different here. They're trying to set up bottom, but again, the Ward of Sight's given plenty of information of Bad Monkey Gaming to know not to push it too much. So they fall back from there. So Root of Z, he's farming the top lane now. He has 1,500 gold saved up. Again, we really haven't seen much of the Nymphora impact just yet. Um, I know it's still a little earlier on in the game, but kind of goes back well, to having that hero. Okay, going to be fine. They did use it in the mid lane once to catch Krake off guard, and they sure. did it again at bottom to catch the, uh, what was it, Magmus? Yeah, it was Magmus, when Behemoth came over and stunned, and then the lunch came in. Like, they have used it, but I think it's more because of the fact that it's a drunken master instead of uh, Pebbles or Deadwood, like you mentioned. Uh, it, it just doesn't have the same feel to it. Yeah. And I really wonder what he's going to go next on uh, Drunken Master. Well, he has nearly 2,000 gold saved up. I mean, this is one of those areas. He went the helm first. You know, Soul's Bulwark tends to actually be a pretty powerful item, I think. Uh, it's just to amplify all that physical damage he's putting out. Um, but with him, uh, you know, I, I still think it's actually a pretty good pickup here, honestly. I don't know. What, what about you? I like Shieldbreaker on him, but he's going to go for the Soul's Bulwark because it's more of a team item. They do want a team fight now, which... I understand, kind of, they have PK on Cthulhu Font, they have PK soon on Behemoth. He's going to be getting it soon at bottom, I think. So this is like their window where they want to fight. But at the same time, Soul's Bulwark, like it doesn't, it doesn't let him burst someone down, and that's essentially what you want. Like if you got a Shield Breaker instead of the Soul's Bulwark, you could pro possibly even one-shot the Magmus because of their low amounts of armor. But that's just personal preference in the end, I think. 
Oh, okay, so yeah, they saw Cthulhu. They didn't see Drunken, though. He goes in on a Cersei, and Cersei's taking some good damage. She is going to be trampled, but she is in Viz currently. Going to stay alive. Nobody dead just yet. As a result of that, Drunken Master in the background doesn't want to go too far. Untouchable is not up anymore. Parasite throws out his burst, but Drunken gets the heal, and that'll be the end of that, apparently. So a pretty big exchange right there, but... No deaths in the end, like I said. Cersei manages to live, again, with that third ability. The Deceive of hers does get away, so. The damage from Drunken, just not enough. I guess, I mean, that's where Strength of Cersei also comes in. It's not a very easy to pick off support mm -hmm. in comparison to, like, a Glacius who will just, like, fall over and die. Yeah. <laughs> um. Balthazar going a Whispering Helm, by the way. At least he has a Helm of the Victim. Do you, do you like that choice? He, again, he's been struggling this game. I don't know. I really prefer the Invis. Like, I know in a competitive game, in, Invis is a lot less effective. But it's not only about the Invis. It's about the mobility factor. Yeah. They're actually going to initiate with the Behemoth PK. Well, that was interesting because the tower was very low. They do choose to go in Voodoo Pump. It almost sounded like he was trying to use it, but... Decided to hold on to it. Magnus, a nice stun. In the meantime, Behemoth Shockwave. Magnus goes down. They turn a big time. Flux is going to fall. What a turn there for Bad Monkey Gaming. As you do see, Cersei took over Behemoth. He's looking for a chance. He actually just Shockwaves the creep. The creep wave right there. Might as well use it. Get some farm. But boy, that was a huge turn by BMG. It looked like with a Magnus stun, that could have been setting up for Mint. But that was not the case. And I mean, guess, big reason, Swiftplay wasn't there, so you do almost gotta wonder what Min was thinking with that. In fact, Drunken Master's still not done. He finds Cersei and picks her off too. So three players dead, and Conqueror could be possible. They're in the area, but no, they're not gonna do it just yet. They don't have the best Kong team, for sure. I mean, Cthulhu can tank a bunch, but uh, they don't have very much damage. Yeah. Just yet, at least. You know, okay, but that was the one thing Mint couldn't have happened to them take a stupid initiation with Magnus and then have no follow-up. Like, they just, they threw so much of their lead with that silly initiation. Like, Legion was backing off. Yeah. But Nymph going in for the port. This is what Fusin does really well. He does, yeah. Gets when he plays heroes up. like this. Or, like, Moira as well. He's always on, in everybody's asses with Moira. It's absolutely frustrating. Um, but you were saying? Well, I was going to bring up, I'm kind of realizing this now, the, with with the Drunken Master pick, the, one of his biggest benefits is that being all physical, he can go through, of course, Drunken Heads and, and well, a spinning Swift Blade, too. So do you think maybe some of the reason why they went Drunken has to do with that, that idea that they're going up against a carry Swift Blade? Well, you know, Breaky, Berserker also does a lot of <laughs> physical stuff. You're right. Why were they not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I actually would have preferred Berserker in this yeah. game over Drunken, because it's a harder carry. That's true, yeah. It's and a it way harder farm, carry. Yeah. And, he, I mean, with, um, what is it, Staff of the Master, he can just get out, like, he doesn't care about Parasite. Oh, no. He just gets rid of all those uh, silly little debuffs, like silences and stuff. He's like, I'm Berserker, what do you want? Such a strong hero, man. Why does no one pick him up? One People day. just don't have the insight, man. One day they'll turn. <laughs> Maybe with the patch, you never know. I don't know. You know more than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's tons coming. Whispering Helm finished on Puppet Master, 1870 gold now saved up on top of that. So Balthazar's kind of found some wiggle room here and has improved as a result. Drunken with a Warhammer. That could be obviously Please, the Shieldbreaker, Shieldbreaker or the Shrunken, yeah. I mean, he is going to need to get a Shrunken eventually because the Magnus might just do things. And, you know, Cersei taking over Behemoth could be painful. Yeah. But other than that, Shieldbreaker, man, he's snowballing right now. Continue this, and uh, he might just be able to do something as Drunken Master. <laughs> I have, I, I kind of feel the same as Quincy about this. Like, I don't think Drunken brings enough to the table to truly be a carry. Like, why put it? I don't like it. Yeah, that was their final pick. I mean, they they really had a lot of options to choose from. I guess if they want to play it more as an issue, like the Pebbles and Deadwood were both of them. If they want to play carry, there are plenty of those options. Now, Parasite, he's actually caught out here pretty easily, and that's going to be a simple kill for them. So they just they lock him up against the freaking cliff and just Yeah, that, 
that was kind of a gangbang. Yeah. I mean, excuse my language. <laughs> but that was right gangbang. here, man. This is, <laughs> yeah. If you're under 13 years old or over yeah. 13 years old, you know. Right, you get my point. Uh, so okay. Slash is coming <laughs> out. That's interesting. Nymphora's picked off right Drunk away. Drunk care, apparently. Yeah, he just gets out and out of there. But, yeah, why they teleported in there? I mean, he placed a horde of sight here. So, again, going back to that concept. but <laughs> Is it worth it? Maybe, yeah. if they don't count toward it. Like, I mean, we saw last game how that one ward up on the cliff at the Hard Camp Legion just turned the game completely. So, uh, maybe this has the same effect. Yeah. I do, like, Mighty Marcus is going for a Sheep Stick, I'm assuming. Uh, Busted Orb, yeah, I'm I don't see him. Like a null stone would obviously be pretty silly on it through the bottom feels like so. Yeah. Probably the sheep stick, yeah. It is a good pickup this game. Like it's pretty much pro busk against the world. BMG has done a good job of coming back only because of the boxy uh drunken master. And he is going for the shield breaker. Nice. I like this. Now he now he's gonna do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah, again, he like it's when it comes to physical, he actually does put out a lot of physical damage. Uh, he, it, he does have minus... Is there minus armor? I thought he had minus armor for some reason on his ability. But no, I guess not. For some reason, I thought the Stagger no, no, no. might have, but never mind. Uh, That's uh, Deadwood for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know if he <laughs> did, but for some reason, I thought he did. But anyways, he still does tons of physical damage. And again, now it's Shield Breaker on top of that, which is still level 1, but going to be upgrading here yeah. as time moves on, and... Uh, ooh, broadsword picked up by Swiftblade. He has a full Dawnbringer here. Wonder what Shroud is, uh, yeah. I think he's gonna go for a Shroud. I mean, it's not a bad item at all. And Cthulhu Fun, actually, invis. Okay, lucky. Yeah, this is... I don't know about I Mint. I mean, Swiftblade is getting kind of low. He is. Yeah, he's almost half-life right here. Oh, man. Behemoth is coming over, too. This is big. Oh, this no. is big. They're only fighting an S2. They're hoping that the sneak is going to work. Nice pushback right there. That will spot the Invis, of course. And Swiftly turn it by time. Nice trample in the meantime on a Cersei as well as Flux. The shot great follow. Magmus kind of, that was a huge timing right there. Cthulhu Fun and Behemoth both fall by the time he got off the Fissure Stun. It was too late. Magmus Zippe. That was a hell of a reaction on his part because if it wasn't the split second he did it, that would have been two heroes dead in favor of the Legion team. But it was yeah, nice. I mean, they split up. Like, they had the really great nymph port, but Drunken, as mobile as he is, still doesn't go for a PK, you know? He doesn't do that. Okay, here's the pup. Oh, no. Board. Yep, that rep board. That rep, they just put it down. They saw him coming in with the ward of sight. They put the rep board down, and Balthazar drops quickly, so... Not the play you're looking for, and now you got a token of life coming here for Mint. 100% guaranteed. Zibe MVP at the moment yeah. with that Magnus stuff, definitely. Yeah. Although, he, like, he has 213 GPM, but it's a Magnus, you know? You do so much with that hero, even without the farm. Mm -hmm. Man, that was setting up, too. I got the replay. I mean, that was setting up to be such a huge jump here. And you know Cthulhu Font, he waited, honestly... Uh, and just looking back at it, it's like, again, hindsight. We use the word a lot, but it's easy for me to say what they should have done. But, man, if he went in when he, right as his team was basically porting in, that could have worked out so much better. But he wanted to wait for his team to actually be there before he went for the jump. Meanwhile, back to the live game at the top lane, you do see Parasite get picked off here, all the portal keys and, and the jump potential obviously coming out here. So... Uh, at least uh, slowing things down kind of a little bit there. But, again, you have the Swift Blade, a Dawnbringer, most likely an Assassin Shroud to come on top of the token of life that he has. So That was the first time that they used uh, the Nymph Fort with a Bursty Hero. They used uh, Behemoth okay. instead of the Drunken Master. And, uh, you know, that's why Cthulhu Fun is great versus Parasite. You can just eat the Creepies in and then stun right after. There's not much you can do as a Parasite unless you have a PK. But, I mean... He's been struggling this game. I thought he was going to snowball more, but he's only got puzzle one. And that's and I I think that's the problem with this build, going ghost marchers instead of striders. Like it delays your puzzle box by one K and that what that one K could just be the difference. Yeah. Shot picked up on uh, Swift Blade. 
Uh, speaking of Shroud, I mean, you mentioned Portal Cam. Parasite could have maybe been a shot on him, too. Don't forget, you know, Pinky Curdy is kind of showing us that here recently. The, uh, oh, assassin oh no. Assassin shot on Parasite. That's horrible. Please, <laughs> don't do it. He's done it several times, and it's actually yeah, it's really fun to watch. And I was, in, I was in the team M versus him, and then I was talking to him about it, and he said, oh, yeah, um, I hit for 300 damage per hit, you know? <laughs> Oh, this is big, actually. Drunken Master, he's dropping a touchable damage reduction. He's trying to get away. Fisher's done helping, kind of. Stagger? Oh, my God. If he actually gets away from here, that is insane. Behemoth, he can go in with a shockwave if need be. Is he going to? Not just yet. And actually, down goes Drunken. I really feel like maybe they could have tried to turn that, honestly. But they just played a safe route. But safe, kind of, not really, because now Drunken's dead. No buyback. And this is okay, going to be a top yeah. push here. Puzzle Box 2 coming out from uh, Parasite. I don't think it was necessary for him to use it, but he can just scout around for wards now. Yeah. Also a benefit of that. But uh, Puppet Master going for the Whispering Helm first. I think it's going to come bite him in the ass. Like it delayed his shroud by a lot, and he wasn't able to gank as much. Yeah, and when we saw him try in the middle there, he, obviously the Rev Ford went down, and he just got jumped himself. So this is going to be an easy two tower kills at least here for Mint. Drunken still has another 20 seconds remaining, so it could even be the third secondary tower. And uh, what would be now, a lot of towers no longer being there for BMG. So that death just kind of snowballs here for Mint in their favor. And yeah, they're going to go for the secondary bottom now. Again, Drunken is going to be up in five seconds, so I want to put it past BMG to try something here. And in fact, there we go. Nip 4 ports in with Behemoth. But you can tell, uh, Mid kind of picked up on something. Puppet Master in the back on looking to open discharge pushback. Cersei going to be jumped off the bash. He doesn't get much out of it. Meanwhile, Assassin Shroud on Swift Blade. He's going to open on him four on a quick kill. And then Magnus Eruption comes in, catches both Drunken as well as Puppet Master. But Drunken still holding his ground. Puppet Master not so much. There's the shockwave finally happening, but it was way too late. By the time it came out, Drunken, they're trying to finish off Flux. Nice and sanitary switch. He stays alive a little bit longer. He does go down in the end, though. And now Swift Blade being locked down by Puppet Master here. However, he's going to use the Swift Slashes. A lot of creeps, though. Take the damage. The dust, it came out later, and the trample already missed. And now Swift Blade going back in once again. About to start again. He clearly bought back throughout all this to try to turn it. And they can't even get the token to be used, though, on Swift Blade here. Even Cersei bought back, by the way. Yeah. I mean, on Cersei, it doesn't... Well, actually, I'd say that Cersei is the one support where it matters a lot on... Yeah. <laughs> Imagine late game, he manages to take over the Drunken Master in this case. Holy crap, that would be painful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, again, it's level 2 ultimate, so now it'll do 85% damage. Uh, level 3 is where it does the 100% maximum damage, but still, uh, getting that Drunken Master at this point still could be a valuable option, definitely. I wonder what he's going to go next on uh, Drunken, though. He does have the Shield Breaker 3 right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you just need to build that. I think he just needs to go full-on tank and damage. So, Insanitarius isn't even the craziest idea on that hero. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, <laughs> strength hero. It, it, it's kind of late by now, but at the same time, though. I don't think so. Know, I, I think it actually still could be yeah? a very, very, very valuable option, yeah. I've also seen people go Shroud on Drunken, but uh, I'm less in agreement with that. Yeah, well, again, he's kind of playing the more of the carry role here. I know Puppet Master with just his struggles. Drunken's playing more of the carry role, so that's why I think going like the Insanitarius, just bulking up there, your combat presence actually could make a lot of sense. But, yeah, if he was playing more than just the true ganking hero, then actually Assassin's Shroud wouldn't be the worst option, I don't think. But Yeah. Um, like, just imagine a... Uh, in Sanitarius, as well as a Heart, as well as a Demonic. That, I think that would be the best items for him right now. He'd be having, what, 4k life and, like, 30 armor? Yeah. He, he could even replace the Helm with something later on. Uh, vision there from Flux. Spots, uh, obviously all the heroes. And yeah, Swift Blade now with the Invis himself. Goes on a Behemoth right here in the background. Behemoth quit killing him. And Swiftly now on a Blood Bass streak, 10 0 oh, 4. They're looking for more. He got to go through the Father Stun. Though they turn on his Swift Play. Will it be enough burst damage on the Voodoo Puppet? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was right there. Had a double check. He does go down to the end. And now the supporting cast, of course, going to fall back. And no buyback on Cthulhu Font. So a big chance here right now for PMG to capitalize. But seriously, doing a good job of juking initially. 
Behemoth finish done in two seconds. Maybe get something out of this. They're doing a great job of splitting and running away. And that finish done almost kind of hurting them a little bit. But no, the Porto Keys around it. And they will at least pick off Cersei as well. So definitely push at least one, if not a couple of towers here if you're PMG. And make uh, make that Swift Blade kill really benefit. But they're kind of falling That back. sheep stick, man. Yeah. From Cthulhu. That, and then the combo from the Puppet Master. Making sure to get the ulti on him. That was really well played. Like, he was overstepping his bounds for sure. Like, he... Swiftblade is still only a carry with 1,800 health. And I think that this is where he's going to taper off. Mm. But then again, you... Like, people think Drunken Master tapers off as well. And he's still doing a ridiculous amount of work. So, yeah. uh... It's... But they, at least he has the backup of Puppet Master, to be fair. Exactly. So he... So it looks less, uh... That's drastic. Yeah. Specs, speaking of drunken, he's the only one pushing them. I'm, I'm a little surprised that it didn't really just kind of go into the tower here. And knowing there was a five versus three, Swiftblade especially being dead, they they don't get any tower kills out of it, actually. So I feel maybe not necessarily getting the most out of that uh, out of that kill on the Swiftblade in the end, but still killing him is, of course, beneficial. Uh, he comes back up, though, and finishes, or he's, he had a Genjiro going into that. So, uh Recommends that Shieldbreaker is rare, just eight of the oh 45 God. games. <laughs> Quincy always so. making sure to uh, debunk my strategies. Yeah, right. Yeah, but um, they should have seen the Genjiro on uh, Swiftblade, and they should have used it as, like, info to go push. Yeah. After a 3k gold item pickup, you don't usually expect them to have a buyback. But, I mean, Mint is still in a decent position, I would say. They have uh, Shrunken on Flux now, as well as, uh, I don't know what he just picked up on Parasite. It's uh, Soul's Bulwark. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Nice on Gogo getting one for the team, and makes sense. Yes, especially against that Shieldbreaker Drunken Master here. You want to be picking one of those up. And speaking of Drunken, going middle lane, that's an illusion. I would think they would be pretty aware of that by now, yeah. If this game goes to the goes late, I think that it's going to be on Serenia's shoulders. Yeah. In being able being able to take over either the Drunken or the Puppet Master. Yeah, he and only then, he's only used it once effectively on the Behemoth. Well, not even effectively. I mean, he got Behemoth. It was on Cthulhu Fun. Oh, the Cthulhu Fun he did get too. That's right. In the river, that was that was an effective uh, use of it. But yeah. you're right. Like he hasn't been able to use it very effectively. But that's because these fights are so fast. Yeah. Like the moment he's done casting his ultimate. It's already too late, and that's why I usually would say to just go Striders and get straight PK on Cersei so that you can get into a good position. And you know, when you've taken over the Behemoth, oh, talking about Drunken. Oh, untouchable, but again, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Lunge tries to push him. It doesn't really work out in the end, though. Drunken Master is dead. He does have a buyback. Nefora basically two shot right there. He drops the bound eye trying to kill it. And Ziflake kills him first, though, and takes it from him, so... Good find there from Swift Blade, and now Congor should be wide open. There is a buyback, like I said, though, on Drunken Master, but Nymphora is not coming back, so I don't know Drunken if they're be able to hold this. Did buy back, but I don't think they should fear anything. Yeah. <laughs> Quincy. It's, they're running over, but exactly. And look at Magnus, too. He's in a, he's in definitely in a spot you would not expect. So that could really throw them off. And in fact, there's the Congo kill anyways. The Veiled Rod's not going to matter. And the Legion team has to fall back. So yeah, Drunken Master probably regretting that buyback now quite a bit. Because basically got nothing out of it. And could have I mean, really just yeah. sat with it and just resurrected normally, honestly. So Both carries are down one buyback. Yeah. Yeah, Probus just continues to be way up there in GPM 580 now. Uh, 2,900 gold saved up here with the token. And they're going to start meeting up towards the middle lane. You got the Veiled Rot once again coming out here. I think you should seriously consider getting some more damage items, though. Genjiro is a great item, but for the rest, I mean, the Energizer isn't going to do much in the late game. So I'm thinking either a Wingbow, because uh, Puppet's not going to get a Savage anytime soon. Yeah. Or a uh, even a savage, you know, just to make sure to burst people down. Because with that ultimate, it's completely possible. Mm -hmm. That's 
Still pretty even game overall, definitely. Meant the slight advantage here, but BMG most certainly still has openings. And it starts with the drop Bottom master. lane. Oh, illusions. Okay, yeah. yeah, Cersei just using those swift blade illusions. <laughs> uh, that's a, that's like the crazy thing of it, I think, is that she can spawn the illusions off of the illusions. <laughs> and keep that it's great. going. great. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's powerful. Cersei, like, when you're versus a legionnaire and you take over a Cersei, for example, I mean, when you Wait, have take over a Cersei, Lugner? yeah, take yeah. Well, the, like well, the spawn illusion, yeah, spin, yeah. Yeah, you can just farm woods with it. Oh, look at this puppet master. Oh, okay, he's kind of going back and forth with it now. See if that was a drunken. Drunken definitely could have. Well, I mean, puppet was afraid. Yeah. He had just used his invis, so it was like, oh crap, yeah. <laughs> it's a swift blade. That's not what I was trying to find. Runs back and. Nobody caught out, but again, the failed rot from uh, from Mint right here. There's all five pretty much, yeah. They're going to be going in. Or four They've done this though. a lot. Let's see. Is it going to work out? Puppet Master? Hasted Flux. Nope. He's in the front. They're going to go for mid instead. They're charging, man. They, they know something's over because the one runs right back into them. Oh, man. Mighty Mark is going to get caught. He's able to get the trample off, but... And actually, the Storm Spirit as well comes out. Who the hell is it? Oh, that was Magnus' the Storm Spirit. Meanwhile, Behemoth gets picked off. To the find the portal key at the last second, he actually will survive. But with Behemoth dead, they lose a lot of initiation power. Token up as well, so uh, this should be Rax. They have a Cersei, so they have insane tower push. Like, he doesn't even have to lose HP pushing the tower, because there's going to be a new illusion up every single time. Yeah. He's already like, able this is just... One, oh, yeah. God. This is looking bad for BMG right now. Puzzle box also popped. Yeah, they just give it up because they figure there's no point without Behemoth especially. It's not worth the try. I mean, Drunken Master is top as well. Like, they have another 10 seconds and look how fast that tower is dropping. Oh my god, Cersei. <laughs> Drunken, you might want to get back. Did they have another oh. ability? They do, but yeah, even Behemoth's still not up yet. Jeez. He buys Rift Shards, by the way. He's got level 2 Rift Shards, so they're all in right here. The Rax goes down, gets through the ball, jumps in, catches Parasite. Shrunken Head, though, on a Flux, pulls him in. Drunken Master looking for a target. Stun on the Swift Blade, locking him down pretty much, but here comes the Eruption. The Shockwave first, but there's the Counter Eruption. Cersei, who is he taking over? Behemoth, it looks like. And now he's going to look for an opportunity, but Drunken Master dead. He's not buying back, and I think we're going to a game number five with that fight right there. Mid just cleans them up. And I expect the GG's to be coming out any second here, because with middle and top, there we go. Vote to concede. We're going to a game number five now, as Mint does climb back and forces the fifth and final game. Here we go, baby. That was a crazy game. Holy crap. I mean, Probusk held on to that advantage the entire time. Well played by him, for sure, and well played by Zibi, making sure that the uh, behemoth didn't you know, kill yeah. those two people that one time. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was at the top lane. I mean, or Magmus, I just remember him in the you know, the Ancients, the timing of his also. To exactly, that's there. what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that big, was uh, so. quick reactions. All over the place. And again, the, the victory there for, for Mint means we are going to a fifth and final game. So I know it is getting a little bit later on for the players as well. You know, this being the fifth game here, so I want to just make this a short break and I'm uh, going to go through it pretty quickly. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be back here. Game number five for the Dead Eye Bounty League. It's Bad Monkey Gaming versus Fresh here. Who will take the series? Fresh, again, they're 0-1 here so far, and you only played three games in, or three series in total. So they lose a series here. That means 0-2, and there's a good chance you're not moving on and competing for a lot more money. Pretty big for them, to say the least. So ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Game five coming up next here on Hawkcast. <laughs>